I don't care what you're facing. God can navigate you through the worst of times. God already knows what you're dealing with, but he's on the ship with you. Hallelujah. See, I want to say something to you uh, tonight. Say some things to you because I want you to get what like that song said, blessed assurance. You need to be sure that your God is with you. Amen. Hallelujah. And amen. Get in the word and let the word get in you. See, that's your own. Let me tell you something. You ain't got no word, brother. The devil will beat you down. You can cry all night long. That don't bother God. I found that out. I tried it on him. It didn't work. I was all pitiful and just crying and boohooing. I mean, showing up crying and like God gonna come. He didn't do a thing. I, I thought surely he gonna come through the night and do something special. I woke up the next morning, same old situation. And when I realized the just shall live by faith. Amen. And we all go through things that you can cry. I'm not, I'm not belittling that. But when you cry, you better cry believing. Cry trusting God. I don't understand, but God, you know, I was telling somebody Tuesday and I was teaching. And Bible, Peter says, if need be, you be in heaviness for a season. Boy, that's a verse God woke up to me. And sometimes people are going through the hardest time. They're like, I don't understand it. Well, well the scripture says, if need be, you be in heaviness for how long? For a season, not forever. And then he goes on to say, but he that have, he, he that have suffered in the flesh have ceased from what? Sinning. Man, you get to going through real bad. You ain't planning to party. You don't want to fornicate. You don't want to lie. Amen. No, that thing too serious. You won't get that burden off of you. Amen. So if you're suffering through some, and the Bible says, maybe you be in heaven for a season, God is the one that orchestrate that, not me. Now don't suffer for sin. That's foolishness. But if you're living right, you're going through a hard period. And you, amen. You're praying, you're fasting, you're studying the word, look like that thing ain't lifting. Maybe God is saying, if need be, you be in heaviness. <laughs> I know you said, well, but Pastor, God is too good. Read the Bible about all the things the apostles went through. Paul said, I burn my body now, the marks of Jesus Christ. He said, I wrestled with the beast in Ephesus. I was in, amen, thrice. He's thrown down in the, in the ocean. Man, that man went through something. Hallelujah. But I understand he had more revelation than an apostle in the Bible. To whom much is given, much is what? Required. So if you're going through a whole lot, maybe you got a whole lot. You've been saying you have anyway. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. I ain't had no Mountain Dew. I ain't drank no Coke. Hallelujah. You know how sometimes we tell how we say we got all this stuff and then when the trial about trying what we got, we, we, oh, geez, we just, you know, mealy mouth then. I don't know why and all that. No, you said you have this. And the trying of your faith is more precious than what pure gold. So I say to God, I say to God, my prayer ought to be, let the will of God be done. Don't be afraid to say, let God's will be done. Some people say that's, that's a mealy mouth prayer. No, that's a prayer of perfection. Because you're trusting God for whatever you want to do. And you got to know that God's not going to suffer you to be, I ain't got any scripture yet, I'm coming. He, amen, he's not going to suffer you to be tempted above that which you're what? Able. But with the temptation, make a way what? Of escape. So I can get out of it. Let me talk about it. It's so bad, I just don't think I can survive. No, God didn't, he's not going to let the devil do more to you than you don't have power to get through. Now the devil will tell you you can't, but he, he's a liar. Why do we spend so much time listening to the liar? You talk to the average person in the body of Christ and they develop a ear to hear what the devil say and not what God said. That means we listen more to the devil than God. And if you listen, if you develop a ear to hear more what the devil say, more of what the devil, what the devil is saying to you, more of what the devil is saying going to come out of your mouth. So you'll end up walking around with a life of what? Defeat. And God has not called us to be defeated. I like what Paul said. We're not only a conqueror, but we're more. Than a conqueror. Amen. Hallelujah. That song says, Yes, I am what God says I am. Yes, I am what God says I am. I am more than a conqueror saved by his grace. Yes, I am what God says I am. Well, well, Pastor, I, I know I know that's what the Bible says. See, when you go there, I know you don't want to believe nothing. 
Because you're telling me what the Bible says, but you're discarding that to make sure you get what you want. You want to you exalt the flesh or the natural. And see, I'm telling you, we got to what? Retrain ourselves. Just like I was taking a shower tonight, and I've been saying I'm going to the gym. Since so Mohead, I done said it and said it and said it, and I kept looking at my stomach, and I said, I got to go. And I was in the shower. I said, now, tomorrow I'm driving over there. I'm signing up, and I'm going to start walking. Amen. See, you can say your, your confession has to have, uh, it has to have matching action. Yes. No, that ain't OH. I heard that. That ain't OH. If too many young folk got stomachs, yeah, that's a lie. <laughs> Hallelujah. Am I right, Brother Mays? <laughs> Amen. I used to say something, Brother Ferguson, but I can't say nothing to him. He ain't got one no more. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. No, see, we got to do it. See, we, we want certain things, but we don't want to pay the price. And then we want to blame it on God. Lord, I don't know why don't you, you know, because I've been praying for supernatural weight loss. I still am. Are y'all laughing? But I, the Bible says if I ask anything. Doesn't it say that? I'm sorry. Let's, let's just have Bible say, don't it say if I ask anything in my name, that will I, will I do it? Amen. I, even concerning my my body, I asked God to, I said, I want my years, but I want you to re, re, reverse the age and effect. Now, y'all do what you want to do, but I'm going to be around here 100 years old, and y'all going to look like y'all about 2,000. I am working. I'm working my faith, and I'm going to the gym. Hallelujah. How many of you have ever said, well, I'm going to try it, and you started on it, and you started losing weight and everything, and you're doing pretty good, and then you got tired, and you just, shoot. Because there are some people that have tried it, and, uh, and I mean, earnestly tried it, and they were, they, were, they were dieting and doing the right thing, and weights kept coming. Well, that will make you give up. But quitters get nothing. Hallelujah. I'm trying to get somewhere in a minute, John. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Say faith with our works is what? Dead. We don't have dead faith. We're alive under God. Hallelujah. The enemy wants, us, wants to convince us, Brother Brian, that we're not who we say, who God said we are. But we are. Now I was reading this morning. I woke up early this morning. I was reading the book of Galatians. And I was, where he was talking about how the law is a schoolmaster. But grace came and did something else. We need a little more understanding about that. Because you don't live based on the law. You live based on the grace of God. But we don't throw the law away like some people have. It's a schoolmaster. Hallelujah. Amen. And what I'm saying is that the law, what the law could not do in that it was weak. Christ came. And see, when you come, to, if a person walk up here and say, I want to be saved with an invitation, and they receive Christ, they are righteous right then, right there. They ain't got to work. You know, a lot of churches say you got to work on it and, and you're going to get right after a while. No, by faith, God deems you righteous. If you fall dead next 30 minutes, you're going to heaven. Now, most of the church said, well, they got clothes, but they didn't make it. That's because that's religion. We are the, the what? Righteousness of God. So when the devil tell you what you're not, why would you listen to him? Wait a minute, Pastor. I did mess up. I missed it. You're missing out. I say this to you a lot. Your failure is not between you and the devil. It's between you and God. Ain't nowhere in the Bible say so you got to go by the devil and tell him you messed up and then come on to me. No. If we confess our sin, 1 John says, God is faithful and just to forgive us, cleanse us from what? All unrighteous. So we go to God when? First. And while I'm repenting of my sin, I'm still the righteousness of God. Like these folk get saved a hundred times, coming to get saved, coming to get saved. It ain't that many saving. We need to get an understanding what salvation is. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, you know, in Luke 15, I just heard that in the Lord. Amen. When the, when the prodigal came home, right? Who was waiting on him? The father. His love had never changed even though he had left. You see that? Now that's good right there. That's, that's a picture of how God feels about us. And when he came home, the father wasn't mad. The father was what? Glad. 
See, we can, it, all of this, what I'm sharing now, is about our identity. Know who you are and know whose you are and know what you have been given. You're not a conqueror, you're more. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. You have not been called, amen, uh, on, to a downward place. He called you where? Up. Ephesians and God has seated us in heavenly places. Where? In Christ Jesus. Far above principalities and powers. Far above. Where are, we, where are we seated now? In heavenly places. Even though you're in Jackson, Tennessee, at 1340 North Parkway, your spiritual seat is in heaven. So we're to operate from where? Heaven. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you something. We have been given authority and power to cast the devil out, to lay hands on the sick. Listen, you're not the healer. Nobody never said you were the healer. God says, if you follow my instruction, I'll do what I say. If I'm willing to lay hands on the sick by faith, God is willing to heal. Amen. You know, in, in, in John chapter 2, at the wedding at Cana, Mary, uh, Jesus said, one more, what you word me up? I'm, I'm amplifying this. Like Bill Winston said, this is B.W.'s thing. This is Pastor Simmons' thing. Amen. Praise God. Uh, 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 he said, one more, what you word me? It's, my, it's not my time. She ignored what he said. But, but now, get this. She said, whatever he tell you to do, do it. Listen, they went and got the water pots. They filled it with water. Some, somewhere between the time they got the water pot and filled it with water, that, and it, when it was time for them to drink, it was wine. Fourth dimension, I think what the brother says. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We got to believe God that heaven is ready to reveal to the church a greater a knowledge of who we are and what we have. The devil is defeating the body of Christ. Listen, a lot of things that's going on in the world today shouldn't be going on because the church is the greatest power in the earth, not the presidency. Not the parliament and other, other nations, but the church. But here's the deal. The church don't really believe that. Part of it does. There's a remnant. There's a Gideon army group of people in the kingdom of God. And God's going to move because a lot of church folk are not really praying. But God has a remnant that's praying and God's going to move in behalf of just who? The remnant. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Say, I am. Who God say I am. Matthew, I mean, since John chapter 15 real quick. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Stop, let, stop letting the devil sing songs in your mind about how you ain't going to make it. You've already made it. Hallelujah. Here I am sitting in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, and I'm crying like I ain't got nothing going on. Boy, that's the craziest thing in the world. How do you like to be brought into a king's palace and they bring you up there and sit you beside him on the throne? Amen. And they, all the orders are full of folk and you sitting over there crying like, I, I wish, uh, I wish I, God would just raise me up. You sitting, <laughs> you sitting right up there by where? By the Father. You are seated in, we, our lives are hidden where? In Christ is in God. So we're seated where? So that before the devil can get to us to destroy us, he got to get to Christ and God. He can't do that. He likes to make us think he can. Now, I will say this because the scripture says that the devil works in whomever what? Let him. So most of our defeat is because we what? Allow it. Hallelujah. John 15, if you have your Bibles, are you there? Hallelujah. Let's look. Let me get these readers. I'm going to buy me some real glasses after a while. These $2 readers, I'm tearing them up all the time. Look at verse 12. We'll start there and go to verse 16. It said, this is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his what? Life. For who? His friend. Jesus said, ye are my what? Friends. If ye do whatsoever, I what? Command you. Now look at verse 15 and 16. is the one I really want to build on. Henceforth I call you not what? Servants. For the servant knoweth not what his master what doeth. Amen? Amen. Now we are called to serve. Let's get a revelation or understanding of that. I'm called to serve. But I'm not just a servant. I'm a son. See, see, that's back to what? Identity. 
You know, I'm just a poor little old servant down here struggling, struggling, trying to make it home. No, baby, that's not who you are. That's who a religious person is. But when you really understand who you are in Christ, you have a different demeanor. And it's not that you're arrogant. It's a great difference between boldness and arrogancy. Arrogancy carries pride. Boldness can have great humility. Hallelujah. So I can be bold and be humble. Some people think when you get bold, oh, that's way, oh, they think he's somebody. Well, right, I am somebody. I'm not receiving that no more. I ain't nobody. So that's why we came to defeat the devil. God, amen. If, amen. If I'm an heir and a joint heir of Christ, how can I not be somebody? Hallelujah. Me, my, 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 my. And I ain't broke either. Because my father is rich in what? Houses and land. Hallelujah. I was talking to the lady from Africa today, Sister Joanna, and I was asking about our house. And we were just, I, you know, I'm a long-term person. I don't like rent. I like ownership. And I know next year, in a year's time, it's going to be time to pay the rent again or have a place. And, and somehow or another, the Lord has been dealing with my heart about some things concerning her. I can't get it out. I can't. It's like it's something God done stuck me in and I can't get out. And I don't want to get out because I now know clearly it's God. And I said, well, sister, I said, do you like the house? I said, you think they sell it? I, I don't know. I said, do you like the house? She said, oh, pastor, I'm living in heaven. <laughs> no, she don't call me pastor. She call me papa. She call my wife mom, mama and papa. That's, don't y'all call me that. That's just their culture. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And we ain't going to talk about what we call each other in our culture. Hallelujah. <laughs> but anyway, she said, no, Papa. She said, it's like I'm in heaven. And then I got to thinking, you know, you're in a two-room house with mud floors with timber and plastic. No stove. You cook your food outside. Now you got a stove. You got a, you got a bathroom. I'm like, ah, Yes. Hallelujah. But even though she's in that, she was in that dire situation, she knew who she was. Hallelujah. See, I don't care. Yo, I'm raising the project. That don't determine who you are. Amen. Amen. Jesus came out of Nazareth. Nazareth wasn't no popular place. One of the most insignificant places it was. And that's why they say, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? The Son of God came out of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Man, I come out of Humboldt. And I know something, come, something good came out of it. Now, Maze, you come out of Humboldt, but I don't know about you. <laughs> Me and Brother Maze, we both from Humboldt. Brother Ferguson come out of, he said can't you keep it. He stayed in Humboldt in the summer. He stayed in Eric, what do you call it? Plum Orchard, wasn't it? My God. It was a plum and an orchard, all right. Hallelujah. But just because where you come from, you come from what people consider insignificant faith, place doesn't mean that you're not somebody. Hallelujah. Mary, listen, there's a whole lot of virgin in doing the days of Jesus, a uh, uh, God choosing somebody. But he found a little old virgin girl. Hallelujah. Amen. So you'd be a young girl in a little old bitty small town where you just, I call it a, a place in the road. You drive, you, 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 you take your front of your truck, and drive halfway, and you're all the way halfway through the town. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. It ain't hardly nowhere. But, but that don't mean good things can't come out of there. Make up your mind that you know who you are. Hallelujah. And so when you, when you really get a hold of that, when you pray, you'll pray with a greater fever, a greater understanding. You ain't got to sit there letting the devil tell you in your mind, you ain't done all this right and done all that right. Amen. Once you repent of your sin, you don't have no sins. So don't let, him, don't let him wear you out trying to pray a prayer of faith and you condemning yourself. You can't be praying a prayer of faith and condemning yourself all at the same time. Hallelujah. Let me finish reading this. What did I say? Henceforth I call you not servants. Verse 13, uh, 15. Hallelujah. But for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Boy, isn't that good? And tell me, I wish the Lord would say something to you. Well, you his friend. 
Pastor, but he hadn't said anything. I promise you this. God is talking more than we're listening. So get on the right frequency. Now the devil, he just blasting stuff out. You ain't no good. You ain't no good. You ain't no good. You know you ain't no good. We can hear all that. You're a failure. Ain't no need you believe in God for that house. God ain't going to do that. We hear all that clearly. But if we listen to God, amen, we can turn that off and say, I hear God. And when you hear God, guess what you do? You, uh, it's something about hearing God makes it come up out of your belly and you start declaring it. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I said, praise God. I said that in the new church we built in Bolivar, in October, we're going to believe in God, pay, pay it off. Amen. Uh, amen. That, that was about a million, uh, all, with all the furniture and all the stuff, it was about a million, two hundred, no, a million, one hundred eighty-six thousand dollars that we'll pay off in less than a year and nine months. So that's good. We're working on this one right here. We're going to pay, we put a whole lot of stuff in here. I bought a whole lot of stuff. But we, I'm saying that we're going to pay it off. Amen? Don't be afraid to declare what you say you believe. Because if you believe something, it has to come out of your what? Your mouth. The Bible says in Romans, the word is what? Nigh thee. Even in thy heart and in thy what? Mouth. That is the word of what? Faith, which we preach. So if you believe it in your heart, you have to say it with your mouth. In Genesis, the Bible says the earth was void and without form, and God said, I remember preaching a message at Pastor Wright Conference a few years ago about say it till you see it. And I talked about the woman that had the issue of blood and out of Genesis 2. He, and the woman said, if I just may touch, what did she do? She said. And she said it and she what? Saw it. People talk about, uh, well, you know, words ain't nothing. No, words are powerful. Proverbs said, death and life is in the power of your what? Tongue. And hey amen, you're going to eat the fruit thereof. So if you don't like what, how bad it tastes, don't be speaking them bad tasting words. Hallelujah. 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 See, God is trying to raise up a new army. Halle no, he's not trying. He is. And I, amen, a lot of folk done gone AWOL. They, they went in, they went through basic training, they learned some things, they got saved, got filled with the Holy Ghost, and God was trying to bring them on to make them special uh, forces and they and, and they abandoned it because it got a little rough. No special forces training is different than regular training. For those that have been in the military, regular training is one thing, but that special force thing, you got to go through some stuff. Amen? But you the one that said, you amen, God, I want you to use me. God said, I believe it will. Hallelujah. So he said, amen, everything that my father has told me, I have shared it with you all. Now look at verse number 15, 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have what? Chosen you. And what ordained you? That ye should what? Go, say that word, go. Uh-huh, and bring forth what? Fruit. And that your fruit should what? Remain. And then he said that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name. What's his name? Jesus. He may what? Give, give you. He may give it to you. The part I want you to notice is, I remember I said, we talk about identity. He said, you've not chosen me. I chose you. So now God chose you. That means he picked you out. Amen. He picked you out, and then what? He or what? Danged you. He destined you to go forth and not just be a servant, but be his what? Friend. And that our lives will go forth and produce what? Fruit. See, God, out of the investment that God made by sending his son to die on the cross and shed his blood and go to hell and be raised on the third day, God expects a return. He wants some interest off of your life. Hallelujah. So you ain't got time to be messing around, particular, not in the hour we're in now. Man, this is, we're coming to the close of age. And if I were you, amen, as if, I, if you're hearing God, if you're praying, you ought to be hearing God. 
And God, if you listen to God very carefully, amen, he'll let you know, amen, he's in a hurry. God is in a hurry. And whatever you're going to do for God, all this stuff about it in the past, well, I'm going to do it one day. No, the day is here now. Hallelujah. Amen. Satan is cutting up sideways. It's more demonic spirit doing all kinds of things. I mean, what do you think brought about all this wokeness stuff? There were demons released from hell. Isaiah chapter 5 said, Warn to them that call evil good and good evil. What do you think brought all that about? There were demonic spirits highly at work. Every, every servant that Satan has, a demonic uh, 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 brethren, I guess I could call them that. Amen. Not brethren, that's not a good word. Amen. But, but, but all that came got cast out of heaven, a third of them. They're all at work right now. It's time for the church to what? Go to work. And we got to be in the letting police. Uh, you can't go in a store and people rob it and all like that. The church has, a, if the police can't stop it, we can. Instead of saying, I tell you, these folks, that's crazy. That's crazy, man. Crazy. Woo. Crazy. But listen, that word crazy don't stop them. Pray. We can bind the enemy. I said again, without a shame, we can bind the devil. We can ask God to what? Arrest that person. God still has the power to train somebody on the Damascus Road. He has the power to still trans. Paul was on his way to destroy the Christians. But God arrested him. Where? On the Damascus Road. God can still do that. If he's ever been first mentioned, he'll do what? Again. Pray the Lord. God arrested me on the Damascus Road. We've all had our, we was on a road going somewhere we shouldn't have been going to do something we shouldn't have been doing. But God, what, arrested us and turned our life where? Around. And I'm glad about it. I say I'm glad about it. I ain't mad about it. Hallelujah. I don't regret the turn that God made in my life. Praise God. A lot of believers talking about, man, I had it better when I was in the world. What a lie. What an insult to the blood of Jesus Christ. Talking about, honey, I could pay my bills better. Well, you had four or five guys. Amen. I knew a lady had a, I'm not lying, this lady told us. She was saved. Man, she was good friends. Me and my wife, she's gone to heaven now. She said she had a utility man. She had a grocery man, a car payment man. Didn't she tell us that, baby? When God saved us, she dropped all of them in. All of us on Social Security. And when they got Social Security, she'd go down to the grocery store, meet one of them there, and he'd buy the grocery. All I'm telling you, she told us. And she says, when I got saved, amen, God, he cut all that out of my life. And I found out God was my supply. Hallelujah. You ain't got to let the devil, amen, he, amen, he ain't got nothing that God don't already have and better. See, I, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to get you confident in knowing who you are so you can rise up and start taking some territory. Hallelujah. Jackson is available. Do we want it? Come here on Sunday morning. I'm hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes we come in and, and we love God. I'm not, I need to be careful how I'm saying stuff. I'm not mad, okay? Amen. But we come in sometimes and we just don't, you know, come in just plop down. <laughs> Lord, you better be glad I'm here. Oh, God. Oh, God. You talk to you, so how you doing? I ain't doing no good. I don't feel like praising today. You praise them for me. Oh. <laughs> Where you find that stuff in the Bible? Yeah. No, the scriptures say enter into his gates with what? Think, when you know who you are, you know whose you are, so you honor what God has said. Yeah. Enter his gate with thanksgiving, come before his court with what? Praise. For it is he that what made us and not what? We are said we are the sheep. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Man in the world, man, they hit the club. The moment they step in, they gone. I mean, just the moment they step in that, you know, honky top club, whatever you want to call it, they gone. No, see, we, we have the privilege to set the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Sometime in this church, man, it's time to pray.